And I'm still going back to those basic, basic things. Centering, opening, needle tool check, widening out like a cylinder. Being mindful of all of those basic core things that we started with, because that's how it all will work, is if you still maintain those. All right, so even like this, right? I have this cylinder. I might go back, push that up with my sponge still, always making sure that I'm compressing the rim, especially with lidded forms, that I want to remain centered at that top. And maybe I'm just easing up a little bit more at that rim. Making sure even the count in your head so you're not just zipping through these poles. Having an idea also about the shape that you're going to make. Even as I get taller, then my inside hand comes, my inside finger comes out. So if you guys could all do me a favor, come over and feel how the rim feels. Go like this. Feel it goes from like thin up to thick, thin up to thick. It is not all thick. I need to leave excess clay at the rim. That does not mean that my wall is this thick the whole way across the whole thing. It means that it's this and then it transitions. This is going to help me not have to trim the entire piece, right? If I left all that weight, it's just not going to work. So that's one of the things that's really important about this style of lidded jar and even lid style number three, same idea. It's really all out because I don't want to have to reach my hand back down there once I split the rim because then I have a high potential to ruin it. You guys want to come up, you can. I'm just hovering, right? Fingers inside hovering. This, place this halfway in the middle. And I'm just gonna just, I'm just gonna sit here until I feel really comfortable. Notice that I'm, I'm linked in here to my body. And once I feel comfortable, I'm just gonna start pushing down. Notice that my tool is at an angle, like a 45 degree angle. It's not straight up and down. That's it. Steadiness is what it requires. So I'm gonna make sure this is not razor sharp. And I can even just take my sponge, take my sponge. I want this drop to be about a thickness of a lid, right? So not, not dropped only this much, right? So the idea is that the lid sits, the top of the lid does not go higher than the rim here. I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming just to clean it up. I am not going to wire cut this, same as before. And while I'm sitting right here, I have my piece of paper, one measurement. Okay, that feels pretty good transfer it. First thing, I don't know how much I'm going to actually need.
but it shouldn't be that much. I'm looking at the lid, I'm looking at the width of that, all right. Toning up, sectioning, centering. This one is opening in the center, widening it like a bowl. Ooh. So round interior. And yes, compression of that interior curve. And let me give myself a idea. All right. So there's a lot of different ways that you can make this. I'm sorry. So let me just focus on this. I'm just going to pull, but I'm pulling as a bowl. So I'm shaping with my inside hand. Compressing. Shaping with my inside hand as I'm pulling. Compressing. A little bit more. So what I was saying is that this uh, type of lid you can do it a lot of different ways. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually do it a few different ways. So this one is definitely going to be right. It's a taller bowl. So imagine that inverted, right? It's going to be, that's pretty good. It's definitely going to be more of a, like a little hat sort of like that. But I'm like, oh, how do I even feel about that? I, I don't know because I don't know how it looks until I see it. So I'm going to say, well, that looks pretty good. I feel pretty good about the curve. If I want to, I don't usually do much with the curve here. I might do a little bit, but again, this is one that, no, I guess it's different. Okay. I'm sorry. So this one, I will still leave myself room to pick it up. But what I'm also going to do with this one is I have the option now to trim out of this mass my actual finial or knob for the lid, or I could add one after. So I'll still leave excess. I actually really enjoy trimming my knobs into the form, but maybe I want to do one that's not so domed. So what I'm going to do, cone up again, but I'm actually, I want to do it wider. So I'm going to give this a little bit more width. I'm going to section it only to here. So when I'm opening this, I'm keeping my finger here and I'm putting my thumb here. I usually actually open with just one finger. This helps me kind of understand the depth, right? Because I'm sectioning to here, which means that I'm opening to here. I'm not opening to here. I'm just opening a little tiny bit because this is like, imagine that this is on the wheel head. That's it. That's the amount that you're opening. Now with this one, I'm going to widen it way more. I want this to almost be like um, more of a, a disc or a low, low bowl. Compress. Hand on the inside, fingers on the outside, pushing up, then moving my fingers like I'm throwing a bowl. So interior fingers then do the work. That shifted in my, it's, this just shifted in my hand. 
Oh wait, no, it didn't. Okay, it felt like it did. All right, so again, fingers on the outside. I'm pushing up, then I'm pushing down with my inside fingers. Compressing, maintaining the curve. are a lot harder to trim down if they're too big. 